Self-filling auto top-off reservoirs are super convenient but should be installed with caution. Hello everyone, Reefer Gill here. In this video we'll be going over my self-filling auto top-off reservoir and the leak prevention actions that I've taken. As a refresher, some of you may already know that my auto top-off is located in my living room and is connected directly to my RO unit in the garage. The reservoir is self-filling, eliminating that part of the maintenance that would otherwise require me to manually fill the reservoir as the water depletes due to evaporation in the fish tanks. I'm using this brand new eShops auto top-off reservoir that came pre-installed with a float switch to prevent water from overflowing. I won this reservoir in a past Magna event. It is replacing my old 5 gallon jug that I used to use as a reservoir. If you'd like to learn more on how to make your own reservoir using a standard container like this one, click on the video link in the description. To connect the quarter inch hose to the auto top off reservoir, all I did was place a quarter inch push connection Y fitting coming off my RODI bin in the garage. I then ran an RODI line up and through my floor. From here the hose makes its way into the reservoir. The total run of the hose from the garage to the auto top off is approximately 15 feet. Because this is an endless stream of water going into my living area, I want to make darn sure that I'm not going to spring a leak and cause me thousands of dollars in water damage, hike up my homeowner's insurance, and potentially even end my hobby. For this reason I have three levels of redundancy in place. A pre-installed float switch on the ATO reservoir, a leak controller, and an apex solenoid. The first defense against a water leak is this pre-installed float switch. When the water level in the container rises, the float switch will be pushed up by the rising water and stop the flow of water before it's able to overfill the reservoir, used to top off the evaporated water in my 100 gallon tank and 20 gallon nano. It is very important that your RO or RODI unit has this auto shut off switch and check valve installed. Without this, water will continuously run through your waistline, fouling up your filters and membrane. But there's no way I'm going to solely rely on this float switch alone. In addition to the float switch, I've also installed this leak controller. Installation of the controller is simple. You can pick one of these up on Amazon, a link will be down below in the description. Before you connect this to an existing RO unit or auto top off, make sure you shut off the water at its water source. Take your quarter inch RO line and cut it. Place one end of the line into the side of the leak controller and the other end of the line into the opposite side. You can orient the controller in any fashion you like, there isn't a dedicated intake or outtake line on the controller. Take the included mounting bracket and screw it into place. You can also use strong double sided tape or velcro if you'd rather ditch the mounting bracket. Align the mounting bracket with the bracket slots on the back of the controller and push into place. The bracket is somewhat flimsy so be careful not to use too much force here. Install four AA batteries into the cartridge and close the battery door. The battery door doesn't snap into place so I would suggest mounting the controller so that the battery door faces up. Otherwise if you mount this with the batteries facing down, you'll need to use a small piece of tape on the battery door to prevent gravity from opening it. The water sensor is attached to the controller by a 53 inch long wire. You can purchase a longer wire and even daisy chain additional sensors if you'd like. Place the water sensor in a location where water would most likely puddle up if something were to leak. I have two controllers, one in the garage under my RODI unit and one upstairs in my auto top off cabinet which is also my nano tank stand. On the front of the controller is a large gray dial. Make sure the dial is turned horizontally to the green marker. This will allow water to freely flow through the controller. Here I purposely wet the sensor to activate the controller. Wait a few seconds for the sensor to detect the water. The controller's dial should flip itself from the green horizontal position to the red vertical off position. You should hear the controller loudly snap like a mouse trap. The LED light on the controller should also be flashing a series of four flashes. You should also hear an audible alarm. Most importantly, the water should no longer be passing through the controller. The controller will remain in this state until you intervene. Once the water leak issue has been resolved, you can wipe down the sensor and place it in a dry location. Turn the dial on the controller back to its operating position and push the button to clear the controller. You'll also notice a button below or above the dial depending on how you have the controller oriented. By pressing and holding the button you can see what state the controller is in. A series of a single flashing LED light means that it's in normal operational mode. A series of two flashes means your batteries are low. And a series of four flashes means your sensor is damp or wet. 
The batteries on the controller should be replaced yearly. I try to remember to replace them every 6 months whether it needs it or not. I just don't want to take any chances of having a major water leak in my living room. The leak controller is a standalone unit and it is not capable of sending you a text message or email alert. If you've been in this hobby long enough you know that things seem to always go wrong when you're away. As yet another backup, I purchased and installed this Apex solenoid on the RODI line. The solenoid will work in conjunction with the Apex water sensor. Should an Apex water sensor located in the auto top off cabinet detect water, the solenoid will trigger preventing additional water from passing through the RODI line. I still have my old ALD module which has since been replaced by the FMM module. I'll be adding the ALD module with the older version of an Apex water sensor. The Apex will be programmed to shut off the solenoid should the Apex water sensor detect water. It's just another added safety measure against a major water disaster. The Apex solenoid has a 10 foot cable that connects into my EB832's DC24 volt port. Once the ALD, water sensor and solenoid are connected, I can go into Fusion and start configuring everything. The first thing you want to do is make sure your Apex is up to date. Then you always want to make sure that the new modules you're hooking up are updated. Once that's all done, you can start configuring your newly added equipment. Since I'll eventually have three water sensors hooked up to my Apex, I want to individually name each sensor. Fusion limits you on the number of characters you can use to name the devices. Since one is going into my ATO cabinet, I'll name it LKATO. Now I can go into the solenoid profile and tell it what to do. Since I just hooked up the solenoid, I have to retrieve it from the tile bar above. I figured out the solenoid was plugged into a plug that's called port Linka 7-9. Drag the new tile down into the Fusion interface and rename it to whatever you'd like. I simply renamed it solenoid. Here I'll program fall back on and set on. This means the solenoid's normal state is to be on or allow water to freely pass through it. Now I'll enter the command if ATO leak closed, meaning wet or submerged in the Apex language, then off. An easy way to remember what the command closed means when programming any sort of optical sensor or leak detector is thinking of closed as covered with water. Closed equals covered. It's just something that I picked up in the forums that has helped me from confusing the Apex command of open and closed from these types of applications. Hooking up the solenoid to the RODI line is simple. Cut two ends of the RODI line and push them together into the pre-installed push fittings. Just pay attention to the arrow on the solenoid indicating the water direction. I'm placing the solenoid here for demonstration purposes only, but the closer you can install the solenoid to the main water source, the more protection you have against water damage. Now that everything is hooked up, named, and programmed, you can go into your alarm settings to have the Apex send you notification if water is detected by the leak detector. Here I enter the command if LKATO closed, then on. And as usual, don't forget to hit that little cloud button to send the information to your Apex. Let's go ahead and demonstrate a water spill. You can see the water filling up the eShop's 5 gallon reservoir. Now I'll place my wet fingers on the underside of the Apex leak sensor. Almost immediately the sensor sends a message to the solenoid to shut itself off and stop the water from flowing. Additionally, a message will be sent to your phone advising you of the issue assuming you programmed your Apex to do this. If you dry off the sensor, the water starts again on its own, so keep this in mind. To prevent the water from automatically starting itself up again when it no longer senses water on the leak detector, you can add another deferred off command for whatever length of time you like. From here you drop in your ATO pump of your choice and you're set to go. There's all kinds of different ways to set up a self-filling ATO reservoir with safety features installed. For example, you can also add a high and low apex optical water sensor to trigger the apex to shut off the ATO pump should the water get too high or too low. This is something I'll consider in the future. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to follow along with the build process of this 100 gallon and 20 gallon nano. Don't forget to hit me up on Instagram. The link is down below in the description and we'll see you guys next Sunday. Thanks for watching.